Good morning, Julia. Um, let's talk first of all about the impact we're seeing right now in hospitality. You know, we haven't got a rule of six. We haven't got a, a scotch egg rule. We haven't got any of those rules right now. But merely the prospect of Plan B coming in, merely the concern about the Omicron variant has caused a wave of cancellations for your industry, hasn't it? Yes, I think what we've got here, ironically, is people have got so used to pricing in Boris's lies that when Boris gets on television and tells us to all have our Christmas parties, everyone's now nervous. Everyone assumes that he's lying as per usual and that some horrible announcement's about to come. And it's like a knee-jerk reaction. Um, it is deeply frustrating because for once in our lives, our industry was having a great December. If No one was getting infected. None of my staff have had COVID since the, the summer epidemic. And, and we're just sitting there going, why have they done this? Yeah. We've seen cancellations running at 10%. I mean, we've lost something like 50 to 100,000 pounds since the announcement. And, and it's the same across the industry. It is an absolute disaster yet again. And, and again, this is people not just being worried about catching COVID themselves, the vast majority of those people being double vaccinating and know that it gives them a huge amount of protection. But a lot of people are just worried about getting COVID, having to self-isolate uh, when they want to spend time with family at Christmas. Business owners, uh, bosses saying, but if everyone has to self-isolate after one person happens to have COVID, even if they didn't catch it at the party, but everyone, everyone who's a contact will have to self-isolate for 10 days, I then won't have any staff for 10 days. That just creates such a big knock on the ripple becomes a tidal wave for business and for people's family plans at Christmas, um, especially after missing out last year. The people go, well, it's not worth it. I'll miss out on that one night. And for them, it might just be, well, it's just one night we've cancelled. It's not a problem. Um, you know, it's a bit of a shame. Maybe we'll do it in January if we're allowed to. But for, for the hospitality industry, it's it's an awful lot of one nights, isn't it? Well, it's, it's, it's two things. It's, it's an awful lot of people cancelling, maybe 5, 10, 15%. And don't forget, in our industry, that's the icing at the top of the cake. That's yeah. where all the profit is. Yeah. And secondly, the other really big factor for our industry is there are two waves of bookings. There's the bookings that come from the organised people. I'm not one of them, but book in November. <laughs> and then there's the mucky people like me who suddenly wake up halfway through December and go, I haven't done my shopping, I haven't booked a party. Yeah. Now they're not going to book. So we get hit twice. And what's deeply frustrating for us is when anyone bothers to read the, the science and you read what the scientists are actually saying it's at the moment this looks no worse and delta looks worse than this virus and there is no reason to believe that we're not protected we're just being cautious which is what scientists are paid to do be yeah. cautious politicians are paid to make intelligent rational decisions that yeah. factor in other costs and yet again we see a government that can't think straight for hell and the, a public that is so terrified of the irrationality of the government that they're pricing in boris and going he's going to do something really random yeah. any moment now and I for all we know boris will do I, I mean that's the thing when we're told oh you know don't worry you'll still have christmas buy your turkey and everything people are like okay i don't know anyone yeah. who feels certain that those rules are going to allow I do, though, know an awful lot of people who've said, I don't care what the rules are. I'm seeing my family. I'm doing what I want. I'm not going to be told again what to do. And a lot of the reason why a lot of people feel that way is because they've seen so many examples of hypocrisy from the government, from, you know, Dominic Cummings at Barnard Castle, defended by the prime minister throughout about that, by the way, didn't force him out of his job. I mean, I, again, I'm a big fan of Dominic Cummings in terms of a lot of the work he did Brexit. The others, I didn't have an axe to grind and I was absolutely furious about that right through to you know they've not been wearing masks they've not worn masks in Downing Street at all all this time I don't want them to wear masks I'm saying they shouldn't be telling us to wear masks I had to wear one in the workplace you know on the tube um, you know in taxis in, in the shop for, for ages they, the mandate being brought back in for those of us who, who, who are not exempt um, and now we discover that not only were they you know basically just doing what they wanted to number 10 November last year when we were in a lockdown across the, England we they did actually uh, have they had a leaving party 40 50 people drinks i mean you can call it what you want but it sounds like a party to me and then on the 18th of december the friday night before christmas uh, they had uh, a party again three times the prime minister was asked to deny this at prime minister's questions he did not downing street press uh, uh, officer uh, answering a i mean two pages of a4 uh, answering questions about this um do, do, saying do, do, i don't recognize no, but just saying just saying i don't recognize his description but not denying there was a party 
How do you feel when the people are in charge who make the rules, who tell everyone what to do and scaremonger, when they are having parties themselves, but telling everyone else they can't, what does that make you feel like? I, I mean, actually, because I, I think we, we in this social media world, we all overuse, you know, I get customers. I had the worst night ever. We all exaggerate. It, we can't help it. Yeah. But for once, I am steamingly angry. I am furious. I find it disgusting. I find it reprehensible that the, our prime minister, we come from a country where 10 years ago, John Major would have resigned within an hour of that announcement. Even Maggie Thatcher would have resigned on this. Any prime minister with any form of integrity. We know Boris hasn't got a lot of integrity, but I think we all hope underneath all the guff and how many children and how many wives and how many girlfriends this man has and how many lies he's told, that there is some sense of integrity. But we are now looking that, Julie, don't forget, I think sometimes we use the word bankruptcy, business ruined. That's lives ruined. That's 20 years of hard graft destroyed. Your home gone, your savings, your pension, because you know what? The bank insisted your loan that you set your pub up you set your restaurant up was based on your home those people lost their lives that they worked hard for played the system employed people paid their taxes and this disgusting situation has occurred where last december when i don't believe we should have been locked down because let's yep. face it before the lockdown the curve was dropping already but let's not talk about that the prime minister and you know, let's you know the thick of it is a comedy, a satire, but listen to this line. I read it and I read it five times. We're just saying we don't recognize these reports. Asked if she meant they were false, she answered, we don't recognize these reports and all COVID rules were followed. So we're saying here, we don't think this happened, but if it did, we followed the rules, but it didn't happen, but if it did, and you just go, you lying, sorry, you lying scumbags. People lost their lives over this yeah. and you were partying. And that to me, if anything has felt like a resignation issue, this feels like a straightforward, I've got caught with my pants down yet again, I resign. There has to be some tiny bit of integrity left in British politics. Well, that's it. Every, we've really got to this level. Everything seems What's to come down to what... Everything seems to come down to what a definition of a party is. Um, one of the questions to the Prime Minister's uh, spokesman yesterday was, uh, I think it's important that if you say that Number 10 didn't have a Christmas party, to be clear for what you mean by that. Because some would say the gathering of 40 to 50 people during which alcohol was consumed over the course of the evening in one small room, one of the events of which the Prime Minister gave a speech, were parties. Do you have a different definition for Christmas parties? The answer was, all I'm saying is we don't recognise these accounts and all COVID rules have been followed at all times. They were asked, were you guys at these parties or didn't you get invited? The response, I don't have anything on that. I mean, we're literally going into what a definition of a party is. I mean, it's quite extraordinary. And a lot of people can say, oh, who cares? It was a year ago. But we've had example of this, example of this, example of this again and again and again. When a government makes rules that they say are absolutely vital for saving lives and apparently the job for which we are put on this planet, protecting the NHS, and people abide by those rules, either because they agree with them and they are scared and they think they'll work, or because they're just good citizens and they just obey the law because that's just what you do in this country. Either way, if the, if the people making the rules aren't obeying them, the question there is, what is that telling us? Are they just putting out rules for the sake of it, even though they think they're a waste of time? Or do they think they're above us? And on both grounds, that is absolutely horrific. I, I mean, I, I agree with you that I think it's the latter. I think what we're seeing here is that the government had to have always got to be seen to act. Yeah. And that's so much of COVID has been doing is virtue signaling isn't it it's virtue signaling and this demonstrates their complete belief that, that that really the reality of the situation was the curve was dropping before they announced it but with high death rates and high hospitalization rates they felt exposed and had to be seen to do something so they had a defense against that attack from the opposition and and i think this shows exactly what the government really thought and for us to have gone through that pain, to have lost the money, we, the jobs, to have seen businesses destroyed and then discover that really this was just so Boris looked good. Just, I'm, I'm, I'm really close to swearing on your breakfast radio show. I am so furiously angry. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm with you all the way. Alex Proud, owner of the